Kirsten and I am the Chief of Staff to the CEO of Algorithmic, Professor Sabrina Maniscalco and Algorithmic are a quantum computing software company uh, applied to drug discovery. So what we do is develop uh, quantum enhanced algorithms and use harness the power of quantum computing uh, to solve complex problems in life sciences. Uh, and as I was telling you, I am actually in Finland right now because this is where our headquarters are in Helsinki for our quarterly hackathon. Yeah, so I would say probably for the professional audience, something that most people probably wouldn't know in my work, uh, daily work life is that actually in my, at university, in my third year, I specialized in marine biology. Uh, so I was trained by marine biologist and sp spent sort of three months for my thesis um, uh, studying coral reef conservation and coral reef health. Uh, so three months on a tiny deserted island. My career can be uh, divided into two phases. So the first phase I spent uh, in a number of commercial roles uh, across uh, the healthcare industry, starting in, in a brand consultancy, a big uh, pharma company, Health Tech. I also did a lot of freelancing for Health Tech founders um, in marketing, sales, uh, life science partnerships, and so, and so on. So lots of different commercial roles. Um, and then there was sort of a pivot a few years ago where. I become a bit more generalized and actually I did an uh, alternative MBA or a leadership program called Founders Academy. So it was born out of Founders Forum. So we were part of the first cohort and the idea was to um, develop uh, the next leaders of, of the startup and scale-up world because no one really tells you what it's like to work for a startup and develop those skills and resilience. And so we learned to be all of the different key roles that you might have in a startup. So. And the idea was to learn by doing, so then we uh, were sent to do six months internship in one of the scale-ups in London. So I did mine at Tech Nation, uh, the UK government accelerator for tech startup, as a sort of right hand to the CEO in a strategy and operations role. And really loved, um, just, I just love understanding how businesses grow in general. And so then the next you know, meaningful step for me was to become a chief of staff. Uh, and so I always knew I was going to go back into the healthcare industry at some point and apply one of those exponential technologies uh, to healthcare, and so here I am doing quantum for life sciences. <laughs> um, so again, as I said, the, the chief of staff role is super versatile, so that means that um, every single chief of staff role is different. For me, I'm working with 90% of my team are um, theoretical physicists. In terms of like my role, it's everything that touches the corporate side of it. So there's only two of us on the, on the corporate side. And so, uh, you know, you name it, legal, finance, accounting, marketing, <laughs> PR. So uh, very, very, very varied, um, and, but super, super fulfilling in, in that sense. Yes, yeah, so I would say uh, I probably have three main ones which I would focus on. So the first one is you've got to be good with people. Uh, you are there to sort of leverage and make your uh, CEO or whoever you're reporting to successful both internally but also externally. And um, you do that through your verbal and written skills and communication skills are super important. You're often their thought partner. Uh, and I suppose you also have to sometimes navigate the um, complex dynamics of the execs team and your, your you know, chairing and mediating and tons and tons and tons of meetings. Being a natural uh, relationship builder and also building trust because it will help you specifically for one thing that I think is quite unique to the chief of staff role where you're uh, a team of one and you have to do one thing which is specific, specific to which is to what I call influencing without authority. So you have to um, start projects, move businesses, move the business in one way, one direction or another, uh, stop a project, change a project, etc. And you have to do this with uh, team leads, but without necessarily them reporting into you and having absolutely no authority over them. So you've got to uh, be very good. This is where your, your relation building skills and your communication skills need to be uh, uh, on, on top. Um, the second thing I would say for a chief of staff is prioritization. So as you can probably imagine, you'll be um, dealing with a ton of different topics uh, on a daily basis. And so <laughs> prioritization is, is absolutely key, especially when you're in a, a startup and where it focuses everything. And then finally, I think the third thing is really, an, um, I'm stating the obvious, but I really mean that you've got to be organized but to the next level because not only you are dealing with your obviously your to-do list, you've got to leverage and amplify your CEO and so think about what, um, and also just take off from their, from their shoulders anything that might um, 
burden them so that they can go off and do what they're best at doing um, and not have to worry about uh, some of the other tasks that, that um, come in with, with running a company. Uh, so I would say being super organized, of course, because you've got to not only uh, do what you've got to do, but also anticipate uh, things that might be happening uh, at, the, at a wide level uh, in the company. I would say the, the first thing is when you're um, looking for a chief of staff role, I would always think about the role that you want to do after the chief of staff um, role. So it's just a kind of thing of uh, chief of staff plus one, uh, because that will really ha shape uh, how you um, go about looking for that role. And so, for example, for, for, for myself, as an aspiring CEO uh, in the future, uh, the role that I picked was specifically um, you know, spanning different functions across the business uh, and it actually represents sort of almost a mini zero role and, and so that would really help. I think the second thing, do, do not underestimate um, how important it is to get along with the, the person that you were put into and so very simply, do you have chemistry with that person? Do you align with their values? Do you, um, and, and are you inspired by them? In a lot of the instances as a chief of staff, you will have to be sometimes their, their voice in internet, international communications and also sometimes have to represent them and stand um, in, in their feet when, when, they, when they cannot attend a meeting. So just so that your life is less miserable, <laughs> make sure that you really focus on that relationship because it will underpin the success of your, of your job. And I guess that finally, the third thing I would say finally is just to build your network. I think building your network in any way is um, super important just in general, but I think specifically for a chief of staff, as I mentioned earlier, we, you know, you're a team of one um, and you, you know, get comfortable with not always knowing the answer to everything because it's not possible to know, you know, an expert in, in, in every single topic, yet you are, you know, faced with having to answer a lot of questions. So, for example, I'm in uh, two or three Slack channels with other chief staffs, which I can tap into at any point. Um, this is how I, I found my PR agency. This is how I found my accountants. And actually on Monday, I was in a call uh, with um, a bunch of other chief of staffs across the UK tech scale-up scene uh, discussing OKRs because that's something I've had to do many times and um, just helping a few other ones, uh, other chief of staffs doing this for the first time.